satanic ritual that canceled Halloween. 16-year-old Ryan Brooks was spending time with his friend Eric late one night when around 1.30 in the morning he decided to call his parents to check in. On the receiving end of the phone call was his brother Nathan who proclaimed that his parents needed him home now. When Ryan walked through the front door he was met with one of the most brutal tragic crimes that could ever be witnessed especially by someone at such a young age. He found his mother stabbed and mutilated to death by an axe and his father who was shot three times by a rifle where his head was severed and placed into a punch bowl. There was a letter left behind by the brother Nathan confessing his crimes. He was later found at a cemetery when he was arrested. Students at school claimed that Nathan bragged about becoming famous on Saturday, which kind of scratched her heads, but it turned out he was referencing this crime. Imagine getting a phone call from your brother telling you to come home and he fucking axed your parents. Ugh. Give me a hell yeah for true crime and horror. Statistics show that in 2023, New York had the most serial killers of this year. But statistically, looking back at some analytics, the state that has harbored the most is Alaska. And more than half of them occurring in the late 80s and 90s. Not sponsored, but Arizona hit me up. Edward Slomp is Alaska's first recorded serial killer. Though he went by Edward Krause, he would abduct men who had very little friends and family. He would murder them and use their identities to travel. But his undoing came from a romance turned wrong where his affections got rejected, so he took revenge on Celia Guskis new lover, William Christie, and he murdered him. What followed was one of the biggest manhunts in Alaskan history. Thousands of men were actively on the hunt. After being on the run, Krause was naturally hungry and weak. And on April 15th, he landed his small boat near Ondotti Cove. The home there belonged to Arvid Franson who was working on a boat. The murderer approached this man's home and the man trying to defend his family approached him and said, are you Krause? Krause replied yes, so he pulled out and shot him twice in the chest and head killing him. <laughs> Murdered on a night shift at work. On November 15th, 1988, 18 year old Miranda Fenner was working in night shift at a video rental store in Laurel, Montana. An unknown assailant entered her workplace, took her to the back and violently stabbed her to death before slashing her throat. The next day, a passing motorist claimed that they saw what looked like a woman crawling out of the store. It was Miranda, sadly, she passed away two hours later at the hospital. Over 700 people were interviewed in relation to this case. In 2012, the murder was turned over to Billing PD's cold case unit. Then in 2017, Yellowstone County Sheriff Officer interviewed Zachary David O'Neill, who was involved in the rape and attempted murder of a newspaper carrier. And in this interview, this is when he admitted that he had killed Miranda and disposed of the weapons during a trip with his father. He pled guilty to her murder on July 22nd. Let's give a respect to the victims. Fuck you to the killers. The nun that was murdered on Halloween. On October 31st, 1981, a man broke into the St. Francis Convent in Amarillo, Texas, and he brutally, violently attacked sister Tadia Benz, who was 76 years old. He strangled and raped her and left her for dead. Her body would be discovered the next day when she didn't attend mass. The story takes a twist. A clairvoyant who went by the name Bubbles started calling newspapers saying she had a vision about the killed nun. She was claiming that it was a teenage boy who did this horrendous act, who was wearing a fake Afro type wig, lived on the same street by the convent. On November 9th, Police Sergeant Walter Yerger said that Johnny Frank Garrett, who was 17 years old, was the suspect because they found his fingerprints outside. Eventually, Garrett was tried and convicted for this crime. That's some freaky stuff out there. Give me a hell yeah for horror. It was an unseasonably warm day on April 19th, 2015. Angelica Graswald became an alleged murderer. She woke up hungover and her fiance, Vincent Viafore, were drinking in Poughkeepsie, New York. The night before, they had argued but clearly made up and decided to take a fun kayaking trip. The destination was Bannerman Island. What should have been a fun day turned into a tragedy. In 2017, Roswald was convicted of criminally negligent homicide after confessing to pulling the plug from his kayak and tampering with his paddle. According to prosecution, the motive was part of trying to claim life insurance. He served just under two and a half years before being released. And in court, she reached a settlement with the victim's family that she would actually receive some of his insurance monies. That's just wild. <laughs> 
there are three disturbing crimes that all happened in graveyards. Charlie Chaplin's body was held for ransom after his death. His body was stolen from a Swiss cemetery. The culprits contacted his widow and demanded $600,000, but she thought that price was too steep and refused to pay it. The police did some investigation. They found two auto body mechanics who were arrested for the crime. Jessica Lynn Keen. After spending some time at a safe house for troubled teens and runaways, she ended up getting kidnapped, assaulted, and murdered. Police didn't know where to turn until they found the suspect, Marvin Lee Smith. In 1991, they found out that he picked her up at a bus stop and she was able to evade him but ran into a cemetery and that is where he committed his horrendous crime. In 2014, brothers Muhammad Arif and Harman Ali were arrested for stealing and eating human corpses. After neighbors complained of a horrible stench, police showed up and they found the head of a young boy and other body parts stewing in a pot. Since Pakistan doesn't have any laws on cannibalism, they only served two years in jail. Ira Einhorn gave himself the nickname the Unicorn Killer. I guess it's the English translation from his German surname. This killer was an environmental activist and part of the anti-war movement. And he murdered his ex-girlfriend. Holly Maddox. Maddox disappeared in September 1977, stopping to collect things from Einhorn's apartment after a breakup. Police did question they had him as a suspect. 18 months later, after neighbors complained a rancid smell, police decided to investigate, and they found Maddox's body stuffed in a trunk inside of Einhorn's closet. When Einhorn was set for trial, he fled to Europe. The US was finally able to get him back and, and convict him of his crime in 2002. Appalachian Trail murders. The AT is a scenic trail that spans from 14 different states from Georgia all the way to Maine. This hike is no joke and although it is peaceful at times, there has been approximately 10 murders on the trail since 1974 that have been reported. The one I'm going to talk about today happened in 2008. Gary Michael Hilton was a 61 year old drifter who befriended and hiked with a young lady named Meredith Emerson. She was hiking the Appalachian Trails. After getting to know each other, Meredith was more of an expertise hiker, so she kind of drifted apart from him. On her way back down from the mountain, she ran into Gary once again, but this time it turned out to be for the worst. Apparently, with a knife and baton, he tried to rob her, and she fought back pretty aggressively. But unfortunately, Gary won this battle. He held her captive for three days before he finally killed her with a handle from a carjack. Hilton was sentenced to prison. I am branching out from shorts and dropping my first full video of a true crime case, so subscribe. John Blymeyer had believed he had been cursed by a man named Nelson Ray Meyer, who was a practitioner or powwow in other vernaculars, a man of magic. On November 27th, 1928, Blymeyer and his accomplice called on Ray Meyer to inquire about this magic spell book that he had, hoping to get the copy in their own hands. Blymeyer, John Curry, and Wilbert Hess demanded Ray Meyer to hand over this book and give it to them. But Nelson refused, so instead of just robbing him, they killed Ray Meyer and mutilated his corpse in hopes that this would lift the curse on Blymeyer. The three men would set the house on fire, hoping that it would burn it down and get rid of any evidence of this crime. However, the house would not burn down. Ray Meyer's charred corpse was discovered on Thanksgiving day of that year. Some people believe that Ray Meyer's alleged powers of magic didn't allow the house to burn down in the first place. And now where this very house stands, it is known to be called Hex Hollow or Ray Meyer's Hollow. He was found dead in his Halloween costume. The smiley face murder theory created by detective Kevin Gannon and Anthony Durat. It alleges that 45 young men and who had all been found dead in bodies of water across several Midwestern American states from the 1990s to 2010s. And the theory is that they did not accidentally drown. The term smiley face became lumped in together with alleged murders when police have found a depicted picture of a smiley face within some graffiti near locations that they believe the killer had dumped these bodies. And one example on Halloween night, Chris Jenkins, went missing. And though some believe it was suicide, a lot believe it has to do with the smiley face murder theory. And when they found his body, 